Cloud computing, including Microsoft Azure, is being used more and more all the time. It's easy to get started, easy to create resources, easy to set up applications that are scalable, high performing, and get to your audience on a global scale. Now, two issues come up again and again though, security and infrastructure choices. While Azure gives you tons of implicit ways that your cloud infrastructure is natively secure, there are still lots of nuances and pitfalls you have to manage. And when it comes to infrastructure, which services, platforms, languages, and integrations do you choose? These are not easy questions to answer. In fact, there isn't a single answer. I'm Lars Clint, and I am with my colleague and fellow Aussie, James Lee. Say hi, James. G'day, Lars. Hi, everyone. Hmm. In this talk, we will rock you. We will, we will rock you. Hang on, this is the wrong script. In this talk, we will guide you through one way of choosing a secure infrastructure, securing an Azure function with an app service environment. This is a great way to meet compliance requirements for that confidential or highly secure solution that you're building. So coming up, we're gonna go through the benefits of an app service environment, configuring a version three app service environment, building a simple version four Azure function app with .NET 6, and we're gonna deploy that function app as well to the ASE. And now, here's James. Thanks, Lars. So let's go ahead and kick things off with a discussion on how hosting works for normal functions compared to an app service environment. To help understand how Azure Functions hosting works normally, let's walk through a basic example. Let's say you're making a publicly available meme generator, and to keep costs low, you're going to use Azure Functions for the image processing component of your solution. So you're going to build a function app, you're going to write your code, you're going to put that into a function within your function app, and maybe you have your users access this solution through some sort of single page application. Okay, now this is great. You've got a serverless solution, you can keep your costs low, and you don't have to worry about managing the underlying infrastructure. And the reason that we can do this is because Microsoft's gonna manage a whole lot of infrastructure across their global data centers, and they're gonna share that out across different customers. So this might be okay for a meme generator that you're building, but what happens if you need to process private health data, or maybe top secret data, or things of that nature? To understand that question, let's actually have a quick chat about what's under the hood of an Azure function. When you deploy your function, you are of course going to have to pick a hosting SKU. So that might be the consumption plan to keep costs really low or something like a premium plan or maybe even an app service plan. Now, depending on what you pick, that's going to go about creating the resources that your application can actually run on. So Microsoft, again, is managing all of that for you. But let's have a think about what's actually there. You know, your app is actually going to have to run on some compute. You're going to have to have some actual execution environment for that to run in. There's also going to need to be inbound and outbound connectivity, for example. And the thing to understand about this within the Azure Functions hosting, or even if you're working with things like web apps on Azure App Service, is that this is a shared service, okay? It's a multi-tenant service. What that means is that there can be other customers who are working on the same infrastructure as you. And we know this, that's pretty normal, right? That's part of cloud. We're able to access all of these different services without having to manage the infrastructure because Microsoft does that for us and they share it amongst various different Azure customers. And this is all kept secure and separate from other customers, but ultimately at the end of the day, you are still sharing infrastructure. Even the underlying hypervisors that a lot of these services run on is being shared across different services to different customers. So that's pretty normal, and that's normally okay in nine out of 10 scenarios. But again, there can be those scenarios where you actually need something a little bit different. Maybe the government contracts or defense contracts, or maybe you've just got some compliance obligations that you have to adhere to, where you can't actually build your solution in a multi-tenant host environment. Now, it'd be a real shame if you couldn't use the Azure Functions or web app type services because of these compliance requirements. Totally understandable, but a shame if you're going to have to stick to using on-premises, right? We know that these sorts of services like Azure Functions, web apps, and other app service services are really great tools for developers. 
And this is why Microsoft has introduced Azure App Service Environment, so that if you actually have to have a single tenant service for you to host your solutions on, this is where we can use Azure App Service Environment instead. So let's have a chat about how it actually differs from the normal types of hosting that you can use. With Azure App Service Environment, we're still getting the same type of functionality with Azure Functions or things like web apps, okay, but it's just for us. It's a single tenant service. It's for our solutions that we build only. We don't share that front end and we don't share that compute. We actually deploy an Azure App Service environment to our own virtual network and we get to choose if it's just going to be internal only or maybe we actually still want it to be publicly accessible. But we get full control over this and with version 3 App Service environment, it's really simple to deploy. And if we want to take it to the next level, we can also actually use our own dedicated hypervisors through dedicated hosts. So that means you get full network isolation and full compute isolation as well. So really cool stuff, right? Why don't we hop on over to the Azure portal and actually take a look at how to configure this. You'll see it's really quite simple to get up and running. Okay, so here I am in the Azure portal. Let's go ahead and get started deploying our app service environment. Now you will see that I've already got an existing virtual network and we can deploy to that or we could create a new one if we wanted to. I'm gonna use this existing virtual network. So let's go ahead, click on create a resource. So let's choose app service environment v3. We're gonna go ahead, click on create and I'll just choose an existing resource group I've got here, ace demo RG, and then let's give this a name. I'm gonna choose my demo ace one and we'll see if that's available. Fantastic that is. And you'll see one of the first important settings we can configure is what sort of accessibility do we want for this app service environment? If it's a really private secure solution that we wanna have fully isolated and only needs to provide internal access, then we can actually do that, right? Not only can we make the single tenant, we can make it fully isolated to our virtual network, but we can still get all of those same sorts of benefits even if we need external access. And that's the option I'm gonna pick right now. So we're gonna go ahead now and choose next for hosting. And you'll see if we want to have that dedicated hypervisor layer for our own benefit only, okay, we can choose choose to have dedicated host deployment. And that's where we're gonna get two dedicated hosts deployed for us just for our app service environment. Now, if we do pick that option, it's great. The computer's fully isolated for us. Just understand that you do miss out on some of those zone redundancy features because that dedicated host group is just gonna be deployed to a single zone for you. So I'm actually gonna choose the host group deployment option. I'm gonna choose enabled, and then we're gonna click next for networking. And you'll see again, we're talking about the network isolation here. So I can pick my existing virtual network, or I could actually go ahead and create a new one if I desired. Now I'm gonna create a new subnet for this. Let's just call this ACE subnet. Okay, and we'll put in some details here for the IP address range. Let's actually just go 10.1.1.250 and we'll have that as a dedicated subnet for our app service environment. So I'll go ahead and click on OK. And then all I need to do now is review and create and we're ready to deploy our own app service environment that only we can use for our own function apps, web apps and things of that nature. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create. And once this app service environment is up and ready to go, we'll be able to hand it over to Lars. Okay, so we've got our app service environment up and running now. It's time to see it in action with a version four function app. So Lars, over to you, mate. Thanks, James. Now to use the excellent app service environment that James just set up, we're going to use an Azure function. This serverless darling of the Azure world has a number of benefits, including development is simple. A function does a thing, a single thing. Deployment with almost a single click to an Azure environment, and very low maintenance as there's no server or infrastructure to love and nurture. Now with James' infrastructure in place, we can now deploy code to it. Now I'm going to use version four of the Azure function runtime, which is currently in preview, as well as .NET 6.0, which is also in preview. How cutting edge am I? I know. You also need Visual Studio Code with the C Sharp extension and the Azure functions extension. We're going to build a fun little function called kitten or cage which can showcase how we deploy a function inside of an Azure service environment. Okay, let's start building. We'll do that using Azure functions that are hosted on an app service plan, which is inside the app service environment that James made. And yes, in case you weren't aware, you can run Azure functions inside an app service plan. This is also an excellent example of teamwork, 
with James being the IT operations person setting up the infrastructure, for me, the developer. And now we'll create the Azure Function app in the Azure portal. And we're back in the portal. The first thing we have to do is create an app service plan, which is going to host our, our Function app. So I go up here to the search bar and I search for app service and plans, there we go. If you're used to app service plans and creating them, then using an Azure app service environment is a little bit different. So we're gonna create an app service plan now. So click on create, obviously, and choose the subscription we have, the resource group that James already created, we're gonna use the same one. And then we obviously we have to give it a name, as always, we're gonna call this kitten cage plan, because we are gonna create our kitten or cage application. Now the region, that's a bit special, because normally you would choose a region that is one of the ones that we normally see, like the central US one here. Now with an app service environment, if I select region, you can see at the top here, there's actually the app service environment itself, because we're gonna place it inside of that gated environment, if you will, the sandboxed environment. So that's very important that you use that and not just some random region, otherwise it won't go inside of the uh, ASE. Go to create here and we're just gonna create our app service plan like normal, other than that, yeah. And there we go, it's now been created, so we can go to that resource and have a look at our Azure App Service Plan. It looks like any other App Service Plan that you would have created in the past, if you have, and uh, it won't have anything in it. So this is what we now can use to create our Azure Function App. So we go up here and we search for Function, and we get a Function App. And we don't have any yet, obviously, because James didn't create any. So I'm gonna create a Function App inside of that App Service Plan that we just created. So I'm gonna use the same resource group because we keep everything together. Remember, resource groups are your logical containers for how you structure things. And the function app name here, kitten cage function, or kitten cage app, that'll do. That has to be unique across Azure, as you can see here, that has been checked okay. I'm gonna choose .NET and .NET 6 because we are creating a .NET 6 uh, function. And then the region, again, is at the top here, we have the app service environment. So very important that you choose that again so that we can choose the right app service plan, because this is what's gonna now look for in that particular region. So a storage account, we're just gonna use the default that's there, we're gonna use Linux, and then you can see here, yep, it'll pre-select automatically the kitten cage plan. And that's it. We can now click review and create because we don't have to worry about the networking and monitoring for now in any case. So now I've created, or well, when I click create at least, I have a function app that we can now use to create an actual function uh, and deploy it to it. So that's all we have to do in Azure. We created an app service plan inside the app service environment, and we've created a function app inside of that app service plan. And we just wait for it here, and now complete, and we have a function app. And that is it. Now, if you just look at the function app here, if you haven't seen those before, a function app is a container for functions, basically. Um, so if you go into functions here, you see there aren't any functions. You could create one through the portal if you wanted to, but we're gonna create one through Visual Studio Code in just a second. So we're just gonna leave that here and I will return to this so you can see that it works in just a minute. So this is Visual Studio Code that we're going to be using for creating our function. So on the left here I have my Azure menu and I'm going to create a new project by clicking on the new project icon. Choose a folder here, I'm gonna call this one uh, Kitten Cage in my local repos here. So I'm gonna create this locally first and select that folder. And then we just go through the wizard here. I'm gonna choose C Sharp and we have templates. I'm gonna choose an HTTP trigger. Now, if you wanna know more about all of these various uh, templates, you'll have to read that up on your own. Uh, we're gonna use an HTTP trigger function. We're gonna give it a name, Kitten Cage function, and we have to give it a namespace as well, which we're gonna call msignite21.kittencage. And then we wanna make it an anonymous, which means that we can access this function from the outside. It's gonna be anonymous access, so anyone on the internet can access this. Be careful with that though, if that's not what you intended. And I'm gonna add it to my existing workspace here. And it's gonna create a standard function for me. We're not gonna use this function. We're gonna create our own. And here's the function. Now this is what uh, Visual Studio Code will create for you if you have the Azure uh, and the function extensions. This is a good way to learn and just try and run it, but we're gonna create another one. We're gonna create our kitten or cage function app. So we're gonna get rid of the old function 
and here is our kid and cage function. So it's very similar, it's very simple as functions should be. The main component here is the route in the signature of the function, and that's kitten or cage and a width and height. And those are the ones I'm going to determine on what to return. So this is quite simple. I'm just going to take kitten or cage. If you write cage, it goes to place cage, width and height. If you type in kitten in the URL or the route, then it's going to go to place kitten with a width and a height. Now I'm going to try and run this either by hitting F5 or as you saw there, go up to the uh, run menu and just hit debug. And it's going to build my function for me to make sure I don't have any errors and syntax errors and all that sort of stuff. I've included the right libraries and so on. And once it's done that, we can then run this function locally. So these are the prerequisites that we're talking about before. That's what allows you to run a function locally through VS Code. So that's quite neat because it allows you to debug it locally rather than having to push it up to Azure every single time you want to run it. So I'm running it locally for the first time here. And you can see here that there is a local host address, port 7071, API, etc. I'm just going to copy that bit in there and I'm going to test it. So now it's running. My Azure function is running and ready to receive a request. So I'm going to open a new browser tab and I'm going to type in the local uh, address and then go, I want a kitten. I want a kitten of size 500 pixels wide and 400 pixels tall. And that will then redirect me to place kitten and give me a kitten. Isn't it lovely? Oh, look at it. Oh. And just to make sure that it also works with cage, we're going to have a Nicholas Cage picture of 500 by 500. Look at him. Super cage. Yeah. Alrighty. Now, what we really want to do, of course, is push this function up to our function app on Azure. So I'm going to go to the Azure menu option here again. I'm going to click sign in to Azure. And then on another screen, it's going to open up a sign in, um, you know, Microsoft account sign in. I'm going to choose my account. And then once I've signed in, I can just close this page and go back to Visual Studio Code. And I'll then be signed in in Visual Studio Code through the Azure extension. So you can see I have one subscription here, which is the one that James also created the stuff on. Here's my function app, kitten cage app. And then inside that function app, you can see the various elements of that function app, such as the functions. And right now, there aren't any functions. But click on functions. And I can then press the little upload button here and that will actually deploy this current uh, kitten cage function up to the function app on Azure. And I could create a new one, but I'm going to choose our existing kitten cage function app. This is not how you deploy functions in production. Remember this people, this is just a demo for this particular presentation. You always want to have a gated release, right? Don't let people push to production. That's just crazy, but you can. And in this case, we just want to see it running so that we know that our function is running inside of the Azure App Service environment that James made. So there we go, it's deployed. So let's go back to the Azure portal and just see that the function is actually there. So if I refresh on the page that we were on before, so this is the page of all the functions, there's the kitten cage function. Now I want to hold this obviously, so I want to get the function URL. And that is right there. There's a button for it. And I'm just going to copy that. And again, I need to obviously, you can see that it knows the signature of the function already. So I can then put in here, let's put in, oh, we're going to go kitten. And we want a big kitten, right? So we're going to go width 500. And I'm going to put in a height 500 as well. And there we go. It works in production like that. Simple. That is all we have time for this time. Well, actually, not exactly actually, because it's plug time. Yeah. I do want to tell you about a great way that you can learn a lot more Azure without the big bills and yak shaving. At ACG, we have industry leading hands on labs. Yeah, they, they really are. The labs let you use actual Azure instances to complete a task such as setting up a virtual network, using service principles to manage authentication and authorization to resources and creating application security groups and a ton more. So give it a go. Use the link in the resources for this presentation. So what did you learn in this session? You set up an Azure App Service environment, which provides both compute and network isolation from other Azure resources. You created a v4 Azure function hosted on an App Service plan within the Azure ASE. And you use .NET 6 to create a top of the line kitten or cage function app that provides essential thumbnail support. Yeah. Now this has been a small taste test of what you can do with functions and app services. If you do want to learn more, why not check out the ACG platform? We have cookies.